Hey fam, Aaliyah here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video where I will be guiding you guys on the best camera settings for good quality beauty videos. So I currently film with the Canon 70D, but I know the Canon Rebel series and other Canon DSLRs have similar settings. So you do not have to have a Canon 70D in order to follow along with the settings that I personally use on this camera to produce very good quality videos because we have similar settings so just follow along i will be going in and out of like vlog mode showing you guys the menu and the settings in which i put certain things on um to film in the quality that i'm filming right now you can apply this to other kinds of videos that you film if you do not have a beauty channel if you don't film beauty videos you can still use these settings i'm just a beauty content creator so that's the perspective i'm going to be speaking from so i hope this video is helpful and without further conge if you are interested in learning some guidance on how to put your camera on the best settings to film good quality beauty videos then keep on watching and i hope you enjoy this video and i hope this video is helpful helpful for you. Okay, so first things first, my quality is pretty good. My quality is pretty HD. It's pretty crisp. It's pretty clear. Um, if I do say so myself, I hope you guys think so too. And it wasn't easy. It took a lot of trial and error. I watched a bunch of YouTube videos to get my camera on the proper settings. Because if you are if you were on this channel watching me when I first started, my quality was horrible. But I had an HD camera. My quality was horrible. It didn't look good. My lighting was off. Um, just the quality was off. It looked like I was filming with a horrible quality camera, but it was because I literally just pressed record and started filming videos. I didn't tweak my camera at all when I first got it because I didn't know how. So, I'm going to go in order of my notes. So the first thing you want to make sure you do is make sure your exposure is centered. Um, uh, because you don't want to be underexposed and you also don't want to be overexposed. So you do want to make sure the exposure meter is centered on your camera. You want it at zero. You would only adjust your exposure if you're a photographer, you know, but we're filming videos. So we want the exposure to be centered. So make sure that setting is at zero. Number two is super key, you guys. And I am so happy I learned this trick. It literally you guys okay anyways let's just get into it customizing your white balance this is like such an interesting scientific whatever okay so you're gonna need a gray card i got one of these off of amazon it was only seven dollars you guys i have it linked down below in my amazon store if you do want to purchase it um some people don't customize their white balance they do it in their editing software i personally do not have a fancy editing software i have a very affordable cheap editing software i use pinnacle i don't use final cut pro i don't use adobe premiere pro yet I just use a regular editing software that doesn't allow me to color correct when I upload my videos or import my footage. Using a gray card will help will make you film true to color. So you just take a picture, you center the gray card in the middle of the frame and make sure your backdrop is showing, make sure your skin is showing, anything you want to be true to color. It's always my skin because I tend to look washed out if I don't customize my white balance and my eyeshadows will look washed out, my eyeshadows won't look true to color and that is key. You want your eyeshadows or any makeup you're using, you want it to look true to color because you do not want it to be deceiving to your viewers. So all you do is take a picture with this centered. I always take a new picture each time I switch out my backdrop. So right now I'm filming with a white backdrop. If I were to film with a pink backdrop, I would retake this photo because I'm not always going to be wearing this. I'm not always going to be wearing this green head wrap. And because of this scientific trick, I never have to color correct in my editing software because I'm filming true to color. The gray card enables your footage to be fully saturated like without any added like saturation without any added color correction so you just take this photo and then you go to your custom white balance setting and the photo will pop up the the last photo you took will pop up which will be the one you took with the gray card and then you just press set custom white balance your white balance will adjust according to that 
photo and that is how I'm able to film true to color. If I'm wearing pink hair, my pink hair will be vibrant. My brown skin, my melanin will be popping. Any color that I'm wearing in my videos are very true to color. So it's no longer deceiving when I'm showing an eyeshadow palette and I'm swatching the shades. The shades are true to color. They're not deceiving. Number three, you do want to get an autofocus camera. The Canon 70D is an autofocus camera. I have it in manual mode, so I'm able to adjust these settings. That's also key too. Put your camera in manual mode. Do not put it in auto mode, but you do want it to be in auto focus. So right now I'm in auto focus and I enabled the tracking feature, which means when I move, my camera is still going to, and I can see the square. So when you're like filming, I have a monitor right now so I can see the square moving with my face. You want to put it on tracking so when you're moving, the camera is continuously focusing on you. Or if I were to put, so I'm in focus, if I were to put this mascara in the screen, now it's focusing on the mascara and then I'm slightly blurred back here. And then now I'm in focus. So you want to put it in autofocus and put it on tracking so you don't have to continuously focus yourself. If you want to put it in manual focus, you're going to have to have someone behind the camera. And not all of us have this. I'm a one-man show, so I have to have my camera in autofocus. Number four, movie record size. So you want to record in HD, but there's more to recording in HD. You have to be aware of the frames per second that you're filming in. So right now, my record size is 1920 times 1080. So I'm filming in HD, and I'm filming at 30 frames per second. That's as high as the Canon 70D will go. If you have like a Canon Mark IV, um, you can film in 60 frames per second. This is another key to frames per second that I learned doing my research. So you wanna go to the main screen of your camera. There's a box on the bottom of your screen, that's like the bottom to the left, that you want that number to be double your frames per second. So I'm filming in 30 frames per second. I want that number to be 60. I don't know how this works. Like I said, I'm not a pro or anything. This is just what I did with research. That number has to be double your frames per second. So if you have a Canon Mark and you're filming in 60 frames per second, you want that number to be 120. If you're filming in 24 frames per second, you want that number to be 58. Is that right? 58? Wait, 48. 48? You, you know, I haven't been in school in a while, okay? So bear with me. <laughs> so I feel like 30 frames per second is the best frames per second you should film in if you have a Canon Rebel or a Canon 70D. Um, more bougie Canon DSLRs, you can film in 60 frames per second. I can't do that on this Canon. 30 frames per second is the highest I can go. It makes you just look more HD, like when, once I noticed I changed my re movie record size to 30 frames per second, I just looked more clear, I looked more crisp, it almost looked like I got a new lens, but I didn't. Settings, okay? Also, with your Canon Rebel series or Canon DSLR, whatever Canon DSLR you have, you want to enable the HDMI setting. So right now I have a monitor right in front of me so I can see myself, see if I'm in focus. We're lying on the, the screen, the flip out screen. You can't truly see if you're in focus. You can't truly see how you look like in the footage until you go and edit it and then you realize your lighting was off, you weren't even centered, your focus was off. So I had actually, when I first started my channel, I was relying on the little flip screen on my Canon 70D, but using a monitor is so helpful. You can use a TV, you guys. A TV that has an HDMI output, input, output, whatever you want to call it, Get you an HDMI cord, plug it into your camera, it'll it'll connect to the screen right away. I use a Vizio TV monitor. You can use a computer monitor or you can use a TV. It just has to have an HDMI output, input, whatever you want to call it. Or you can use your laptop. Okay, moving on to aperture. My aperture on this camera is not very good. Like, the lowest it will go is about a 4.5. Because I, I have a kit lens, I don't film with any fancy Sigma lens. So you want to put the aperture on the lowest the lowest number. So don't, don't bring that aperture up. You'd want to keep the aperture low, especially if you want your background to ap appear blurry. So right now, my white background, it looks pretty smooth. You know, you can't really see the texture. This is actually a cloth. It's a textured background. 
but because my aperture is on about 4.5 and I'm kind of far away from my backdrop I'm not up against my backdrop there's like some room between me and my backdrop it makes it look very smooth you can't even tell that it's a cloth background next ISO I film I would say film between a 400 and 640 ISO ISO is your camera sensitivity to light right now i film with about seven lights one two three four five yes i film with about seven lights i used to film on an iso of 100 and i only filmed with the ring light so that was all it, it was just low quality the higher your iso is it kind of lowers you can't really visibly see it like a viewer couldn't see it visibly with their eyes if your iso was at an 800 900 1000 but if depending on how many lights you're filming with I would keep it between 100 and 640 but it all depends on how many lights you're filming with if you're only filming with a ring light you just need to adjust your ISO according to your lighting I used to film on an ISO of 500 and that was pretty good quality I used to film on an ISO of 100 and my video quality was horrible and it was because I was only filming with one light I should have brought my ISO up higher and lowered my aperture so just adjust your aperture and your ISO according to your lighting higher your aperture I don't even know if I'm using the correct verbiage but your higher aperture you're not going to get that blurry background effect and for beauty videos you kind of want that it just looks aesthetically pleasing it looks good you get a great depth of field and it just makes your vi video quality look really good but with aperture and iso there's no really correct setting you should be on it's all about your lighting so just because i film on an aperture of 4.5 and an iso of 400 doesn't mean you have to too this is something you can play with you can tweak and you can always adjust like you would increase your iso all the way to the max if you were like trying to shoot a photo in the dark or shoot something in very low lighting so if you're filming with a bunch of lights there's no point in having your ISO super cranked up to like 1000 2500 8000 however high your camera's ISO goes it'll just make your video quality it will lower your video quality okay I think we're on the last one sound okay right now I'm filming with an external mic so it doesn't really apply to me right now but you want to put your sound on manual if you're using a mic that you're inserting into your camera like a plug-and-play mic I, I would not recommend using the actual built-in camera mic the quality is not good if you want me to do a video on audio just give this video a thumbs up if you want me to do a video on lighting if you want me to do a video on backdrops I got you just give this video a thumbs up we can make this video a series I can spill all the tea I can give you all the tips and tricks and just remember I put everything that I film with in my description box in my Amazon store so check my description box and check my Amazon store for everything I film with I literally put everything I hope you guys out I also write little captions on the things that I put in my Amazon store so you guys know why I like that piece of equipment why it helps me when I film why I would recommend it okay so put your sound sorry I went off tangent put your sound on menu and I would put it at the third notch you're not going to be filming right up straight close to your camera you're probably going to be filming a little bit of ways I would say I'm about three feet away from my camera so me using my built-in camera mic this the sound would be horrible so put it on the third notch um, because you're not going to be straight up to your camera I would recommend getting a road mic or an external mic um, I use an external mic you just I can make a video on audio if you want me to just let me know down below tell me if you don't tell me I'm not gonna know what you guys want to see but that about wraps up this video I will put everything that I said in this video down below I will list it down below because I know some people are readers and they can't really follow along with talking I hope you found this video helpful if you did be sure to give this video a thumbs up I tried my best to explain it as best as I could if you're not already subscribed to my channel I hope you decided to subscribe by the end of this video I would love to have you on my makeup journey on my channel journey if you have any other tips for camera settings be sure to comment them down below maybe you know a very good tip as well so just help each other out put it down below and before i close out this video i do want to give a post notification shout out to mary chrismanich mary chrismanich i don't know if i said your last name right but you're always showing me love girl and i appreciate you 
so much you are so supportive i love you so much if you would like an appreciation shout out in one of my videos be sure to hashtag notification squad after your comment tap that bell to be notified of my future uploads as i do upload about two to three videos every week and until next time always remember to serve honey and i will see you in my next video bye <laughs>